special guest, Nicole. You've seen her on Take Me Out and Baggage. And maybe we haven't seen you on Parental Control. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe our audience has. Uh, my name is Jimmy. Jake is here as well. BBD in the corner. Brought to you by DraftKings. If you go to DraftKings and you uh, want to bet on the Pacquiao-Ugas fight, huge. you can choose one fighter uh, to win. And if any fighter lands a punch, your $1 will turn into $100 in free credits. And you can bet on those for the rest of the baseball season. And the Yankees will never stop losing. So you can just do that. Uh, so download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 in free credits when you bet on a fighter to win and a punch is landed during the fight. Place your bet and watch the fist fly this weekend. That's code JOHNBOY to turn $1 into $100 in free credits only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana. 1-800-9 with it. All right. Nicole, thank you very much for joining us today thank you for having me this show and this uh audience is, is the same youtube channel that we used to we used to watch baggage on and then we did the full season of take me out uh and you were one of the only contestants on both so when you reached out a couple weeks ago i think our reactions uh were in the <laughs> behind the scenes vlog and it was like yes i want to we need to chat <laughs> need need to chat. no hesitation had yeah to. So I don't know where to start. I guess you're coming to us from L.A. How's how are you doing? How's life? Life is awesome, despite what's going on. Um, I've lived in Los Angeles for 15 years now. God. Okay, so it's been like 10 years since Take Me Out. Which wow. <laughs> I mean, that's me. like nuts. I, um, uh... Every day for me is the take me out resort uh, in my head, <laughs> oh, at least. God. How um? So it, let's let's go back even further because okay, I I mentioned our baggage saga. You are genuinely talking to two of the biggest baggage fans in the world. We we used to just like when it was on late night, we would text each other, and then this whole thing has turned into like a company and stuff. So baggage was such a big thing. We loved it, and then they reached out and they didn't love what we were doing with it so much. But one yeah. day down the line. Uh, we'll do more with it, but tell us the whole thing because it sounds like you got you were in the whole cycle. You're you're still out in LA. Were you just signing up for any and every show that you could at the time, or how how did the whole path go for you? Yeah, so I originally I'm from Maryland, um, East Coast. I, you guys are in New York, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I went to college for theater and dance, and then I uh, went on a couple different children's theater tours, and then I moved out here in 2008, um, and I've been out here ever since. So my, my main focus is acting. Um, I do mainly TV, but a lot of voiceover as well. Uh, when I first moved out here, I was gold for reality shows. <laughs> um, I'm really blunt, East Coast. And when they would call me in, you know, they were calling in pretty much anybody. This is before I was in the union, <laughs> so I could do these things. Um, and then the first show I did was Parental Control. And um, that that actually is pretty crazy, that episode. At one point, they have me pretend like I'm skinny dipping. So I take my top off while running into the ocean. So you guys should definitely try to find that episode. Yes. Um, <laughs> from that, they knew I was down for whatever. So um, <laughs> all the, honestly, the producers and the casting directors kept calling me in for every reality show. Um, one thing you guys got wrong about me is okay. that I don't, I don't work in a bowling alley. I'm a professional bowler. Like Our bad. legit, like I think that was the comment section because one of your maybe. baggages was you have a beer can, beer tap <laughs> collection. No, listen, think... that's separate and that's true. <laughs> okay, that's so so one of our, I think in the comments someone said, well, it makes sense that she collects beer cans because yeah. she works at a bowling alley and there's oh, a bar okay. there. So that's maybe just muddled. So professional bowler. We tried to connect too many dots. That's our bad. Or I someone think... was trying to make sense of my hand <laughs> tab collection, um, which is which is all right. But no, I'm a professional bowler, so that is true. 
I mean, when you go into those reality show auditions, you can't say you're an actor or voiceover or whatever. So I would say professional bowler because I was literally bowling in tournaments and whatnot. Ninth in, ninth in uh, the state in of Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I first came out here, I was really avidly bowling as well. So it was true, you know, but really I was going on because I was an actor. But um, I would also tell them like just crazy shit. Like I smoked cigars because at the time I, I did like avidly <laughs> smoke I smoked <laughs> It's good to get into hobbies. It's good to have hobbies. (laughs) (laughs) Only for a reality show. (laughs) Um, And then just like, I would just tell them whatever they wanted to hear. And so they were like, yep, let's bring her on. And so baggage was the second thing that I did. Um, And from that, I wound up doing an MTV pilot that did not get picked up, but it was a reality show pilot based on, god based off of it's called excess all areas and it was based on somebody that has an addiction to something Mm. and um they pulled me in they couldn't find anybody that they wanted for the pilot the pilot was scripted um and then they were like we've been seeing people forever and we're just we want to go with you and that was really cool they flew my mom out to la twice all my friends were in it and the addiction was alcohol um do you have the tape from that do you have the tape of yourself being addicted to alcohol (laughs) i don't damn i i know i let it slip through my fingers because uh they just didn't pick it up they called me in to paramount to watch it i saw it pretty legit but like if (laughs) if they had picked up the show and used someone that actually had an addiction they could not have done it in a half hour, which is what they were trying to do. Because mm. I had to show up with a doctor. I had to like get my mom involved, all my friends, because they wanted the real. So that's why they didn't pick it up in the end. And then from that, I got on Take Me Out. And I was the last girl to be chosen as one of the top 30. Right. And I this was like the day before. And everything was very fast-tracked for me for, for Take Me Out. Um, and then I think that was the end of my reality journey circuit. Let's, let's start with baggage. Cause that's my favorite. Um, we actually talked to yeah. like the producer of baggage when we were trying to, <clears throat> I think he's the head of game show network now. He's a really cool guy, but, uh, because the biggest question was how real is it? How not real is it? And when we finally talked to him, he was like, well, you know, we interview, he told us that we interview these people. And we ask them tons of questions about their life. And then we just take a snippet and turn it into a, their baggage. Because sometimes the contestants seem genuinely surprised by what was being said about them. And then they'd be like, what? No. Uh, and like deny it. Is that how it went? Did you, Or did you give them three pieces of baggage? I, I did, that is kind of how he said it is kind of how it went. But the thing is, they would take one small thing and then they would say, okay, we're going to heighten this. So, on it. so my third piece of baggage was I led an angry mob to attack my boyfriend, right. my ex. Yes. They definitely turned some dumb story that I had into like a bigger thing because that was my biggest baggage. Mm. I'm actually I'm actually remembering this now. I <laughs> forgot about that. Um, so I would just, you know, go with it. And then for the tabs, they had my dad send the picture of the tabs all over his basement, but he spread them out. So it looked like I was hoarding these things and that they were taking over a room in my house, which mm. was not the case. Um, and then the other one was the flushing the toilet. <laughs> mm. That that one's real. <laughs> um, that's, that's just living. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just being disgusting. Um, <laughs> but but honestly, when you got there into hair and makeup, because this was filmed in one day, um, they told you the baggage there. That's probably okay. why some of the girls were were surprised. But you did know what was in your suitcase. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So. 
Mm. What about what about when uh, you? <laughs> this is so in the weeds of the show baggage. So I know it was just like one day in your life, but <laughs> no, the, I mean I'll talk about any. The other. moment when uh, the, after the second round they make you do the do si do to like fake the contestant out. I forget your episode, but wow. did you guys do like that a good? In the did you guys do a good <laughs> fake out there? It's my favorite part. We didn't. We didn't do a fake out. Oh, but I know wow. what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, there was a girl on my episode that, at the time, honestly, she could barely understand English. She was like Romanian and, or something. Right. R- Russian. Yeah, and Russian. I, rem- I remember they were having a really hard time with her um, because she was refusing all of the things that they were saying to her about her baggage. Cause when we get there, they're there, they might have maybe four things and then they pick three. So you can like say, Oh no, I want this one. Mm. And she did not want any of her baggage and she couldn't understand what was going on. And I was like, Oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to be crazy. Um, I was like, I'm winning a date today. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we didn't do the do si do, I think, maybe because of that situation. Too confusing. But, like that. Was Jerry yeah. the best? Mm. So nice. Um, I got along with him really well, <laughs> as I also got along with George Lopez really well. Um, but Jerry was just, I mean, he's just awesome. He's not, like, you know how he has his Jerry Springer show, or did, you know, yeah. where it was pretty nuts. Um, he was he was just cool, cool guy, funny. When when you're going on baggage, and you know, obviously you know you're jumping into the deep end of something. I mean, what what are your genuine priorities at the time? Are you like, are you looking to get semi-viral? Are you looking to put on a good show? Are you like, I can't, I mean, I low key want to win. I've got that, you know, pro bowler. You're trying to get the win. I know you. Um, what, what's your mindset when you're jumping into like baggage on set that day? Get me on TV. Yeah. That's my thought. That was my thought. Um, it still is, but we couldn't go viral because there was no viral at the time. So it's not like I could promote it on Instagram. And then of course I did on Facebook, but like, um, yeah, that was my thought was get me on there i'll do anything you guys want i'll say anything you want what were what were the i mean obviously some similar vibes would take me out we we were trying to theorize some stuff because we knew you know when we looked that up there were the eight episodes so we knew you know when we were coming up against it did did you guys know that that was going to be towards the end of the line because i think that last episode I think, like, more people were in than normal. Like, everyone was trying to get to the final round that it looked like people <laughs> knew the show might be on the way out. Was that happening at all? 100%. Yeah. Um, so when we signed on, we knew it was going to be eight episodes. And um, it was a freaking bloodbath, man. I mean, like, behind the scenes of Take Me Out, was very very intense Mm. um first of all we weren't allowed to leave the hotel we weren't allowed to talk to anybody so it was kind of like being on like the mass singer or something where you just can't tell anyone you're on the show you're in this hotel which i loved they were paying for our (laughs) hotel stay i was like heck yeah i won't talk to anybody um and we were filming the episodes almost every day so we were there for like two weeks straight and um most of the girls on the show were very very fake everyone actors Mm. right same deal with being on baggage or whatever Mm -hmm. you're you're trying to get on tv and the problem is that most of them were models and none really we're having anything they wanted us to have the catchphrases i know you guys were like oh yeah majorly majorly getting on oh, me in God. particular for throwing out the zingers or the, the but yours weren't as bad were it was together. it was um the woman who came dressed like rosie the riveter i forget her name um and oh. then 
the other one with the I, I mean I'm going to describe like physical appearances and it, I don't want to go down for, that but I know exactly the blonde, what you're talking about the blonde one that was right at the end for us it was it was just such a clear contrast of what works now and what they thought worked then is like let's hit him with the zinger let's hit him with the one liner where especially in the world we live in now it's about being natural and being like true to yourself right. which yeah. You know, but you, you, but you could spin that, and a lot of them could not. And even George had a tough ask. I mean, yeah. George, George's his, lines were ridiculous. His lines were brutal. They were, but, I mean, there's one point in episode one that he says, like, let the cheese see the crackers, and they cut to me, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, like, half the time, if you guys, like... Okay, so Janae was my best friend on the show. She was the girl staying next to me. Yeah. Had all the fa- all the fashion, which she actually does do music and fashion, and she got to pick all of her. We we kind of picked all of our outfits. I mean, they gave us some and we brought some, but she um, definitely was just so down to earth and cool. And I know you guys liked her on the show. Yeah. She just was was a rock star. Um, but. I actually, during the show, a million times, you'd see me and Janae going, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they they cut to us, and we're just like, oh, my God. Like, some of the guys that they would bring out, which, mm. you know, looking, ba- looking back, probably wasn't a <laughs> good thing to do while I was on the show. But um, They should have brought out some, like, actual guys. <laughs> like, I think <laughs> it would have been more successful if the guys were, like, dateable guys they basically did because like a baggage route with a bunch of uh like yeah. 30 girls and then like like the one dude who came out and started like stripping and he was like five foot one like he was it was like well come on gotta have some real contenders here but again this is people that want to be on tv and yeah. you know actors that are doing god knows what at the time and all the people on there like some girls were like i knew that guy just because he was like auditioning and stuff and they Mm. would see him you know um but back to like the cutthroat bloodbath stuff um so being on take me out was a game in itself for us you didn't want to go out on the first episode because right. you're getting paid per you're getting paid per episode and you want to be on TV. So you got to play it right. And wow. I did. I did because I got the le- very last date. They actually were <laughs> going to have another guy on and they were like, "No, this connection's good. Let's end the show here." So I pushed it right to the end. You had to keep your buzzer on at certain times. You had to have a phrase for what you wanted to say if George mm. came to you. And then the phrase had to be good. And the producers were feeding some girls lines. And I probably shouldn't say this, but sometimes the girls' buzzers were on or off, depending on wow. what the show wanted. Um, so that became that became really intense um, because the girls were flipping out and the producers were calling them over. I would see it. They would call them over and they'd be like, if you don't say something funny, you're gone. Um, mm. But but they're picking these 30 girls to be on the show. People are going to notice if they're gone. So they right. had to like either put them out or, you know, give them. They were feeding mainly everybody lines. They never fed me a line. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I was also cast as the tomboy of the show. So with the comments that I made was more like, well, I don't know if you guys heard the comment when I was like, come on, doesn't everyone cheat? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Little did I know George Lopez had just had something come out in the news mm. that day. And <laughs> everyone was like, did you do that on purpose? And I'm like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> oh, my God. But he was cool. He didn't do anything weird. But um, <laughs> like I was just I was pretty blunt, honestly, still in my comments. Um, but they had to be very like concise in a way of like yeah um what did i say one point you liked his accent i remember i didn't 
I didn't mm. like accents in the first episode. Yes, you did not like he accents. He was Italian, and I was the only one with my light off, yes. and you could even see me go like this. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> because, I think, yeah. I apologize, but I think my reaction was like, well, you feel like a bitch now, Nicole? <laughs> like, yeah. You're the only one <laughs> off. Yeah, you did say that. But honestly, <laughs> it, it did look like that, and you know what? I don't regret it, because it brings, what are they wanting us to do? No, they want to provide entertainment. The reason why you guys are commentating on it and making comments is because you're entertained or like, what the hell? Like that was my right. whole goal was to like make sure that I was providing some sort of entertainment for people because I didn't care either way on the dates, but I was very honest about the guys that I liked, what I liked about the guys. And the last guy that I got with George, he's a phenomenal person. I still talk to him. When wow. he came out, I really, really, really liked him when he came out. I loved everything he was doing. Um, and our connection was genuine. Like he actually, he 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 told me later, he was like, yeah, I, I already knew that I was going to pick you before we even got into like the, the second round. True love. Um, yeah. So did, well, how was, we, uh, did you guys there, get to go on a date? Yeah, because there was no like. We did, f- it, we did. They did show it. Oh, they, they did? They showed it at the very end of the last episode. Instead of the last guy to be on, they showed our date. Mm. And people, are, people were saying, is Nicole drunk? And I was. <laughs> I was, I was Damn you know, it, Nicole. We, we have people that always say, are you guys drunk or high? And we're, I'd say, 80 per, 90% clip we're not. And I was just gonna say like, no, you weren't, and then you drop, <laughs> you drop that. So that that well, won't okay, help us. Well, okay, here's here's how the date went. It was at the resort. No, there really wasn't a single resort. Look like beautiful. I think Jim Jim had said there, well, there wasn't really a resort. Just a it bunch was of like wineries. wherever they wanted the date to go. So we went to um, uh, Morongo, and they did pay for our stay, but the date portion was like, all right, you guys are going to a comedy club. Go in there, sit down, we're going to roll, come back out. So it was like, we didn't actually get to enjoy the whole thing. And then it was right. like, okay, you guys are coming out to the patio, we're having a dinner. So we'd go out to the dinner. But every single time they were letting us still drink. <laughs> so I was running the thing to thing and I was just like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, and by the, why not? La- by, the, by the last interview, I was like, I love him. <laughs> Um, Forever. Um, the Greek couple. Yeah. I don't know if you watched every one of our watching, but there was one. I tried to. There was one couple uh, that was like the second or third episode that we are pretty dead set that they are mm. found true love and started a family together. <laughs> so if you could confirm that, even if you have to lie to us, they were like two short, very Greek. He he wrote like children's books, uh, and we I were. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, some of the girls did really like the guys. Um, and I'm not sure how many people actually really wanted to find love, but <laughs> they did. They're married. They're um, happy. It's a great family situation. I don't know about those two per se, but it's very possible. Like it's, it's true then. That sounds like a we yes believe. to me. That's great. Uh, I do. I do keep in contact with a lot of the girls because after the show, we had red carpet premieres. We mm. had um, screenings at different clubs. And we we all, surprisingly, got along at the, at the we weren't getting, hardly anyone got along on the show because mm. it was cutthroat. It was like, who's gonna be here for the long haul? Who's funny? Who's getting pulled right. out? Who's, you know what I mean? So it was just, really intense but then afterwards it was like for instance mindy mm-hmm. everyone could not stand her on the show no, i wonder her why real, her real personality is like that mm. she was laying it on thick she was laying it on thick obviously but then at the party it was she was normal mm. i mean she still had that kind of energy but sure. like she was cool like i got along with her and there was a lot of girls on the show that i was just like oh my god i want to kill that person <laughs> But then later at the premiere, it was like, wow, we all did this cool thing. So um, I do still keep in contact with Janae, with George. Um, there's a girl, Kelly, that was standing next to me. And then also Aaron. And Aaron is very successful comedian. Um, Aaron Darling. She was, I think, right next to me. 
Um, so those girls I still keep in contact with and they're all pretty successful now. So that's awesome. Um, do you, uh, cause I mean those, do you, when you look back at like that run of what you were doing, do you wish you went even more deep end with it? I mean, is it, it just was what it was at the time and, and you enjoy it now? Is it, what, what are like, you know, it, this doesn't have to be a reveal all, <laughs> all feelings, but like where, where do you sit with it at, at like now? Um, well, I'm so much farther along in my, you know, acting career now that looking back, I'm like, can this come back to haunt me? <laughs> um, which it kind of did with you guys, but no, <laughs> I, I watched, I watched, well, okay. So I, for some reason was looking up, take me out. Um, because there is one thing that you guys don't know, but I fell down the stairs. Ooh. Uh, very first opening shot, first episode, and took out like two girls. Awesome. Um, <laughs> it was rough. I mean, we were walking down very slippery stairs. The stairs were made out of that fake plastic that had light had the lights underneath, mm. like all game show sets are made out of. No railing. You're holding hands with the other girl, Jeez. and your heels are this. Yeah, oh, I don't. I'm not good in heels in general, and I was like, somebody's going down these stairs. I literally <laughs> said it right before that, and then I slipped and I fell. But they cut it. So at like three, at like um, the three minute mark on episode one, you can see me laughing as I'm walking from the stairs because they had to cut away and then come back, and you can see uh, one of the girls fell down the stairs and she broke her ankle and she was off the show. And I can't what? remember who that, Jeez. I can't remember who that was, but I don't know if you guys picked up on that. I guess maybe you didn't, but uh, yeah, she had to get carried out on a stretcher. What? Anyway, so I was Googling <laughs> that. <laughs> what? Guys, drop I'm telling a, you, drop the, a show, bomb the, on show me. Was, the show was deadly. Um, but I was Googling that and I found your guys' thing and it was my episode episode eight and i was like what the hell <laughs> what is the, I, what are these assholes doing i watched it and i was like oh my god oh my god and i started looking at all the comments people were saying we hate nicole as a collective <laughs> i'm like oh my god and then like <laughs> when you said um just want to remind everybody that she works in a bowling alley and, like, <laughs> and you you guys were laughing like for like five minutes straight. no but that was but that was we were laughing because jake was laughing about the love lift killing the guy. i uh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was laughing with you guys trust me i was cracking up with you guys I, it is ridiculous it's i forget if we were just I was burnt out. I, I don't know if it was work or life or both, but yeah, that final episode of Take Me Out, like just that, the eyes kind of go glossy and your mind is fried. And I just had such a vivid image of like last episode, everyone was kind of pulling out of the show and the love yeah. lift just went wonky and just tossed him around. And I was, <laughs> I was in a bad, I was just mentally shot for about a minute and a half. Oh. I mean that is hilarious when when uh when you're like he just chooses to go back up in the elevator. I mean you guys your commentary is is hilarious like of everything. Thank you. And if you ever said anything not the best about me, I don't care because I was on there for you guys to do that. Well, and this is why I wanted to come on the show because I think one you guys are hilarious. Two I wanted to let you in on a couple of the secrets yeah, of the show. Thank you. I mean, a girl falling I down mean, the steps and a stretcher coming, that's, 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 cool. that's <laughs> they got to run that next yeah. time. <laughs> Actually, you can find the footage of a girl on the British version of the show. If you Google um, or YouTube, take me out, girl falls downstairs or something like that, they will show you the girl that fell down the stairs on the British version of the show. And it's exactly how we felt on the stairs. <laughs> <That's, laughs> it's man. pretty ridiculous. They didn't, they didn't care. They were just like, you're wearing these heels and you're walking down these stairs. So you, you found like, the videos probably after all the baggage episodes got taken down. Because we had, Ooh. 
maybe yeah, 40. I couldn't find those. We had like 40 uh, where we re- we did the same thing, just commented. And I, like, it's perfect for baggage because the, the, the things that are being said there, are, like it's made to be ripped apart because it's like, what? Yeah. Like one dude's right. like, I sleep in a coffin. It's like, what? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So we're trying. I just put another feeler out to see if, bag- if uh, Game Show Network will allow us to do it again because we have all – Three hundreds of baggage, <laughs> ready to go, ready oh to God. watch and record. I was wondering where us. that was. I was like, well, if somebody pointed out that I was on baggage, how? Where's that? I was trying to find your episodes, but we still we have it, just it's not so it's not public. So yeah. if you wanted to, and then see I it. saw on your Instagram, I saw a clip of when <laughs> <laughs> when you guys said I was a vaudeville character. <laughs> A vaudeville? Yeah. A vaudeville, yeah. Guys, I am. That's... Like, it's, I am. Like, that's how I talk. I talk out of the side of my mouth all the time, so cool. I... it's like, pretty pretty spot on. I kind of live in the same world. I, uh, <laughs> as just ridiculous, and I uh, start tap dancing right now. Do you like right? that? Yeah. Oh, put a little money yeah. in the hat, yeah? So, no, that's, from, yeah. from me, that's an ultimate compliment. Um, but, no, I yeah. mean, we, um... Yeah, I, I know because <laughs> right before we hopped on, I told you how how <laughs> we like we had a baggage ordeal. Yeah. It was a thing, and there will be baggage content in our future. We just don't know how. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it would, might have to be like a live showing where we invite people to come sit watch with us. But I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to start doing parental control episodes because they are ridiculous. I mean. That's, we did that's the most ridiculous thing. We did some MTV ones. Unfortunately, like if it's not on, if it's not already on YouTube on some crappy third party channel. Yeah. We can't do yeah. it. Like, so like a lot of the old yeah. MTV ones are on MTV or like even Nickelodeon. We were watching Guts and Legends of the Hidden Temple, and that was, but then Nickelodeon came calling. So bummer. But yeah. uh, I think the yeah. hardest, like uh, that episode for you to watch that last episode of Take Me Out first, I believe that's the hardest Jake has ever <laughs> laughed in the last yeah. three years. Uh, he like didn't breathe nice for two minutes just thinking about the guy getting in the elevator and and then it opening up and him just laying there. Just one of those memes about like your your last brain cell and what it's doing in there. Like that's where I was, and it was a beautiful moment for me. I mean, I was I was laughing the whole time you guys were laughing because it is ridiculous. I mean, that was the whole point of the show was to entertain and. It was ridiculous. Do you think those shows could do well today? Do you think they'd have to go more off the deep end? Do you think that would play, like, better on on YouTube type stuff we're doing? Or, like, back on the main networks just with, like, like you were saying, like, social media now. If they did a Take Me Out, they could probably get, you know, 30 people with a... 100k to Instagram followers and they can fight everyone behind the set and stuff but I don't know. No, that's what's like going wrong with like MTV the Challenge and Big Brother. <clears throat> Big Brother actually just switched to not do influencers anymore because they're just like so caught up in being who they want to be that they're not just themselves. Like for you Nicole, you said that you know you were just doing it to money and be on TV and stuff but compared to some of the other girls on Take Me Out, you were very real. I mean, I thought I was yeah. <laughs> until I heard people's <laughs> comments on your thing. But um, no comments to, lie. To, comments lie. To answer to answer Jake's question, it wouldn't work because, whew, you guys heard some of the things we were saying. It would not fly today. Yeah. Um, we were just being very innocent and making like little phrases that were supposed to be funny or whatever, but. Now, half the stuff that everyone said on there, like, that's why I was scared. I was like, do I want to watch another episode? Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, at one point, I think you guys said, is that racist? Oh, well, you said that a couple times. But, I mean, now it wouldn't fly. Like, well, I think, I think you said, there, like, I love Puerto Ricans or something like that. Okay. He, I was like, well, first of all, I love Latinos. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. Sorry, I think it's but fair. That, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's. Um, but. He said, I'm from the Dominican Republic. And I was like, excuse me, where are you from again? So ridiculous. <laughs> and then he was like, Dominican Republic. And I'm like, check, done. <laughs> um, 
And then George said, oh, you like Latinos? And I was like, yeah, because they hadn't brought any out. Yeah. Because I was waiting. I kept telling the girls, and all the girls knew that I liked Latinos. And um, mainly just, well, is it bad if I say I like Asians? Because I do. No, that's fine. Um, so then they finally brought out George, and all the girls knew that I would want him. Like, they knew this about me. Uh, I was kind of like parting the sea, everybody. like, yeah. don't get in Nicole's way here. Yes, that's why everyone was blocking my button, because they knew I was waiting mm. for somebody like that. They kept bringing out these, oh, my God, just idiot. <laughs> It wasn't this, a good pro- crop. At one point, it was like this is. It was like they did the first round of American Idol, but never the final. Like never the good auditions. It just meant like gag, gag guy, gag guy, gag guy. And I bet you they did have a hard time finding guys. I mean, would you guys want to be going on there no. and being putting out your baggage to everybody? You gotta be pretty shameless. All these girls. So it's like if you're a normal guy, you're probably not going on there. But George was a comedian mm. and a rapper and a comedian rapper pretty much and a skateboarder and so he was like what do i have to lose let's go on here and then he was the last guy to bring out they saved the best for last and um i was like well it's my time to get on a date because the last episode it's time to know, go of course that was everyone's thought process yes you guys were right about that you caught on to a lot of the stuff that was going on when you were like it looks like that girl's surprised that her light's on. Yeah. I think said that once. There was a couple of those. And I was like, those. dang, how did they? But Yeah, we got the eye for it. We got to try a British one, I guess, if we go back to doing Take Me Out. We'll try yeah, and I, I think you're good. We Because uh, we, we've gone through different phases of trying and watching different things. And uh, I think, you know, because those were, what, 2011, 2013, whenever it was. But, the uh, you know, we watched some old MTV stuff. Some of the old, oh like, MTV God. dating shows from the 90s. And, and a guy will be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I only hook up with a chick if she's fucking drunk. And you're like, hey. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Ah. One of the episodes of Next, <clears throat> the dude just uh, took his dick out and, and chased the girls naked. Like on the show, and it was pro- like you're saying, it was pro- probably a little fake, but still, even the idea of that being fake and cool almost <laughs> makes it worse. Yeah, um, yeah. That one's still up. You can Making watch it's worse. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're ever in the East Coast bowling, I want we'll we'll, <clears throat> we'll bowl together. I'm not a pro. My top score is 215. I keep it. That's I keep great. a picture of it on my phone. Only open frame was the tenth. It was very sad. Oh, yeah. 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 At least you had that string of strikes. Yes. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have the scorecard. It's from, <laughs> like, 2005. Oh. It's just, you know. <laughs> You're like, wait, let me check. <laughs> junior year of high school, I, I moved to California, and their PE and kind of general public schooling system is terrible. I took bowling three times in high school, twice mm-hmm. as a senior and once as a junior. So I got pretty good. Yeah. Jake's- what was your average coming out of that? Well, my top score was two fifteen, and that's the only stat I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yes, but what is Jeez, the average? Well, because... <laughs> no one really is quite sure. You know? <laughs> How do you even get an average? You know, here we go. I went. Yeah, you have to bowl more than three times. I, guess. <laughs> I went nine spare strike, mm. nine spare strike, two picked up the spare, got all eight, then a turkey, then seven closed it, nine closed it, then nine on the last frame. Could have had a 216. You didn't close out the last screen? No. Mm. No. Yeah, that was the problem. Yeah. (laughs) In the game before that, I got a 117. Mm. A 117? Yeah, that was the two games that day. November 15th, 2006. So, so yeah, I'm up for it. Whenever you're in town, we'll go bowl. No, seriously. Do you still bowl competitively? Oh, no? Um... Because of the pandemic, I stopped. Mm. But I was in three leagues a week, which was a lot. Yeah. Mm. Um, and bowling in tournaments at least <clears throat> once a month. Um, and I had a coach, one of the best coaches, at least in the U.S., um, very expensive. And I realized that this is a whole other career that I would have had to do and I wouldn't be able to act. You'd have to be in the bowling alley every day. So I kind of like fell off of bowling right before the pandemic and mm. then the pandemic hit and then 
it was like, well, I can't go bowling anymore. But I would love to go back. I have all my own equipment. Mm. I still audition for things as a bowler. Okay. Um, You're in Superstore for, for commercials. with something bowling, right? Yeah, that was the one of the best days of my life, actually. Um, it was, they called the bowling alley. I was there. Everyone knows me there. Pins in Studio City for anybody that knows Los Angeles. Um, and they were like, yeah, we have somebody. And they called me. And I was at the bowling alley when I talked to them. And they were like, hey, can you do trick shots? Do you feel confident in that? I was like, yep. <laughs> they were like, no you're an actor, you're in SAG. I'm like, yep. They were like, can you send a picture? Okay. Um, next day I was on set. They had a bowling ball made for me mm. because I told them, I told them, I cannot make this shot with, with your guys' prop. It was just, you know, Need I have a hooking thing. ball. So, yeah. So they took me to the bowling alley that day while they were filming and they had a bowling ball made for me. They let me keep it. Um, when I came back, they were like, just so you know, the director wants a, a guy for this. Wants a little, uh, like a 13 year old boy, like mm -hmm. Dennis the Menace, you know, <laughs> like a dumb kid comes sure. along and just throws a bowling ball. Right. And I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> and they were like, but, but, and they're like, but you're the professional. I'm like, yes. And I was like, trust me, if you knew my personality, you'd, you'd say that I'm that little Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Can be that. And so I was really nervous because they were like, just so you know, we have three 13 year old boys that don't know how to bowl ready to do it if you don't make the shot. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm wearing Ugg boots, sweaters. And if you know anything about bowling, you don't want all that clothing on you. That's not good. And I'm wearing gloves mm. and hats. And well, I don't think I was wearing a hat, but I was wearing a scarf because it was the Midwest. And they were like, okay, so the whole super store stage, that whole store is very large. It's like a huge warehouse, right? Because they film everything in there. So they have all different spots. So it's pretty far. And they were like, you're going to hit that s display of suntan lotion. And I'm looking down there and I'm like, all right, I can do this. I can do this. They're like, oh, just, just so you know, the floor slants here. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Perfect. And they're like, all right, get some, get some gloves on her. And I'm like, okay. And I'm just like, shit. And, um, everybody kept coming up to me, hair, and makeup. They were like, how are you going to do this? And I was like, I gotta do it. Gotta hit and it. they were like, I remember hearing the director go, well, we wanted the boy, but the girl's professional, apparently. <laughs> oh. that's, the, that's the first time I ever experienced anything like that, being, I guess, female and having somebody say, no, a male needs to do it. That was weird. Yeah. So I was like, I got to make this shot. They were like, all right, let's give you a practice shot, right? They have the crane above me. I'm used to being on set, but... It, you know, this was a pretty crazy shot. Everyone, they were just like, good luck. You know, there were background people crossing the aisle. I just lost this. Um, background people crossing the aisle. So I had to throw the ball and they had to like dodge it. I throw the first practice and they rolled on it. I missed it by this much. Mm. Am I there? Yep. Yeah. Okay, because it's frozen on my computer. And I was like, all right, I just got to adjust. I just got to move to the left. They were like, all right, let's roll. I threw it. It was perfect. It's the shot that you saw if you saw the clip. I got to go and, watch this. Um, I haven't seen it. Everyone was cheering like I had just won <laughs> the Olympics. It was insane. It was the last shot they had to do before they went on hiatus. Mm. And they got to go home early. And everyone was just like... Oh my God, I can't believe we did that. It was just so, it was a relief, but it was awesome. And uh, it's a cool shot too. So like actual uh, I'm, visual. I'm going to so. go grab that and watch that. That's awesome. It's a clip. So yeah, if you're ever in the East Coast, yeah. we're going bowling. We'll set up some trick shots. We have an alley. We could do it back there, but they kicked us out. So yeah, that would have been so fun to bowl in the alley. <sighs> but alley bowling. We used to play bowling Wait, like bocce. A bowling alley or no, an alley, like, 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 like an alley in the Bronx. 
My buddies and I in middle school, <laughs> we bought like bowling balls from a garage sale and then we would play bowling in the neighborhood. Just like bocce, like all right, that mailbox, yeah. but like it was like, you know, throw like bowl at like fifty feet on the bowling balls got chipped to shit. But it was pretty fun. Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was like, Oh, we can't throw my balls up down the alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to get you'd have to you'd have to buy some. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much oh, for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you for uh, thank tuning you. in and watching, watching, take me out. Yeah, I'm glad that we didn't. You didn't click on it and then get upset or anything. Because <laughs> I'm the same yeah, as you. I'm like, I don't know. Why what would we I, said. I wouldn't be here. That was the first thing when you yeah, did the email. I, I was like, what were we mean? What did we say? <laughs> but awesome. Yeah. Thank That's you. Good. Awesome. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Where should thank we send you. people that are trying to keep keep up with you? Where are you most active? Um, well, I am going to be on a TV show soon called American Crime Story Impeachment. I'm on episode seven. Okay. Right. Probably can't say, probably can't even say that, okay. but I'll say that. Which, you won't and say then, that. We um, said that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll just find it. And then, um, I actually have been on a sketch comedy team for like se seven years. Um, it's called Ooch Comedy. If you guys can go to our page, we do a lot of sports and Marvel uh, sketch videos and then also pop culture and stuff like that. Um, so that's O-O-C-H Comedy. It's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Ooch um, Comedy. Ooch Comedy. Awesome. Ooch. Ooch. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we are... Uh... Gonna go draft Dumb and Dumber quotes. That's the second half of the show. So big day, big oh, big, awesome. big day ahead of us at work. <laughs> <laughs> Times thank, are good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole. Claps in the thank chat you guys. for Nicole. Thank you guys so much. Of course. Be good. Oh. All right. Ooh, that, that was, was awesome. awesome.